North Korea's constitutional court rules to dissolve a minority left-wing party and strip its five members of their legislative seats, accusing them of pro-North Korea activities. The UN General Assembly formally adopts a landmark resolution calling for referring the North Korean regime to the International Criminal Court for Human Rights Violations. And the White House says it's taking the recent Sony Pictures hack as a serious national security matter, while North Korea is widely suspected of being behind the attack. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the newscast. Coming to you live from Seoul, I am Kang Tae-ri. We start off with a historic decision by South Korea's Constitutional Court. For the first time ever, the court ruled in favor of dissolving a political party here in the country. The minor opposition, Unified Progressive Party, founded just three years ago, is no more. Ji myung reports. Eight out of nine judges at Korea's Constitutional Court ruled in favor of disbanding the minor opposition Unified Progressive Party on Friday. It is the first time the court has ordered the dissolution of a political party since it was founded in 1988. During a nationally televised verdict, Justice Park han chol said the minor opposition party had violated South Korea's constitutional order and sought to achieve a North Korean style of socialism. The party's four members, including now former lawmaker Lee Seok-gi, were arrested last year on charges of trying to instigate a rebellion against the South Korean government in the event of war. As a result of the party breakup, all five of the party's lawmakers were immediately stripped of their seats. The National Election Commission says a by-election will be held in April to fill three of the seats, while the other two will be removed altogether. The ruling also prohibits any party with similar goals and ideologies from being established in the future. The head of the Unified Progressive Party, Lee Jung-hee, was resolute after the announcement. I, as the chief of the party, am responsible for today's ruling. Although the government has dissolved our party, it is not going to dissolve our liberal mentality. The nation's two main parties had decidedly different viewpoints on the court's decision. It is both a victory for the Constitution and liberal democracy. We urge the UPP to reflect upon what they have done wrong. We are worried that the ruling might have undermined the freedom of a political party, which is the foundation of democracy. Friday's groundbreaking decision by the court came after the Justice Ministry filed a petition late last year to break up the Unified Progressive Party. And many political analysts expect the decision to further deepen the rift between liberals and conservatives in the country. Kim young Arirang News. Following a committee decision last month to adopt a resolution calling for the North Korean relation and leadership to be brought to The Hague for violating human rights, the UN General Assembly also passed that resolution. North Korea was quick to denounce this move. For more, Song ji sun tells us more. The UN General Assembly has voted in favor of referring North Korea to the International Criminal Court for alleged crimes against humanity. The result of the vote is as follows. In favor, 116, against 20, abstentions, 53. Draft Resolution 1 is adopted. The non-binding resolution drafted by the EU and Japan was previously approved by the Assembly Third Committee, which deals with human Mr. rights. President. This vote comes after a UN commission released a report in February that detailed the extent of abuses in the North, including political prison camps, torture, starvation and mass killings. The UN Security Council will meet next Monday to discuss the resolution, but is almost certain to face stiff opposition from veto-wielding powers China and Russia. Because of this, watchers say that while the assembly vote increases international pressure on North Korea, it's largely symbolic. Pyongyang's envoy to the UN lashed out at the passage of the resolution. My delegation totally rejects the resolution because the resolution has nothing to do 
with promotion and protection of human rights, and it is a product of a political plot and confrontation against the DPRK. He added that North Korea was ready for dialogue and cooperation on human rights, but said the issue was being used as an instrument for regime change. Western nations are moving to put North Korea on the UN Security Council's agenda, but China opposes the move, saying the council is not the proper forum for discussions on human rights. The General Assembly also passed a resolution on Thursday condemning rights abuses in Syria and Iran, but did not go as far as referring them to the ICC. Song Jisun, Arirang News. Meanwhile, South Korea's foreign ministry has welcomed the passage of that UN resolution and called on Pyongyang to implement concrete measures to improve the situation. In a statement Friday, the ministry said the adoption of the strongest resolution yet reflects the international community's determination to deal with North Korea's human rights abuses. The ministry added that the South Korean government has always and will continue to urge North Korea to take specific and practical actions to enhance its human rights conditions. Now in the third and final part of our special three-part series of reports on North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's first three years in power, we take a look at Pyongyang's rare attempt to re-engage with the outside world. But as our Hwang Sung-hee tells us, it merely served to deepen the regime's diplomatic isolation. Getting cozy with Russia, sending a high-level delegation to South Korea, negotiating the abductee issue with Japan, and releasing American detainees. North Korea engaged in a series of unusual diplomatic overtures this year as it found itself on the outs with its longtime ally, China. But the efforts proved unsuccessful. Led by the United Nations, North Korea came under strong pressure to improve its human rights issue. Consequently, its efforts to diversify diplomacy hit hurdles and the regime became even more isolated. I think it was a very difficult year. Pyongyang warned of more nuclear tests to counter the latest UN push on its human rights violations. In their attempts to eliminate the state and social system of the DPRK is compelling us not to refrain any further from conducting nuclear tests. But analysts doubt Pyongyang will be so hasty with a nuclear test, since that would anger its allies China and Russia, although the regime will likely launch a violent protest. Their strategy, their playbook is to respond with force, fight fire with fire. Another nuclear test, another missile launch, um, you know, satellite launch I think will be coming in 2015. That would further delay the possible resumption of the long-stalled six-party nuclear talks involving the two Koreas, the U.S., China, Japan and Russia. Nonetheless, experts say North Korea will be more aggressive with multilateral dialogue next year and seek diplomacy at the highest level. In order to end its current diplomatic isolation, North Korea will be more vocal about resuming the six-party talks. In that process, it could seek a visit to China or Russia by Kim Jong-un. Seoul's unification ministry echoes that view. It expects Pyongyang to use all means available for a bilateral meeting with Washington. There could also be some progress in negotiations with Japan by July, marking the one-year anniversary of opening such talks. And if these all-out efforts to end its diplomatic isolation fail, the ministry says North Korea could seek an opening by turning to South Korea. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. Chinese President Xi Jinping has pledged to play a constructive role in denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula. That came during a meeting with the Speaker of South Korea's National Assembly's uh, Chung Lee Hwa in Beijing on Thursday. President Xi said Beijing would do its best to restart the six-party talks aimed at getting North Korea to give up its nuclear ambitions by persuading members to come to the negotiating table. The Chinese leader also pledged to support cooperation between the two Koreas for the sake of peace in Northeast Asia. North Korea is still widely suspected to be behind the recent hacking into Sony Pictures, but the U.S. has not made an official announcement just yet. Now, but the White House did say, though, that it was seeing it as a serious security matter. For more, here is Kwon Zua. 
a serious national security matter. That's how the White House labeled the cyber attack on Sony Pictures. White House Press Secretary Josh Ernest said that the evidence suggests there was malicious intent behind the hacking and that it was done by a sophisticated actor. But he did not name North Korea as being that actor. He said a range of possibilities were being considered and that the Justice Department and FBI was still investigating. But all signs seem to implicate Pyongyang, and some with knowledge of the probe say their involvement has in fact been determined. A U.S. official said the hackers stole a Sony administrator's identification card, giving them access to the entire building. Another piece of information came from a North Korean defector who claims he was part of a North Korean agency called Bureau 121, which trains around 18,000 people to become members of a hacker's army. Sony, while the victim here, has not dodged criticism for canceling the theatrical release of the movie The Interview, which centers on a CIA plan to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Some say the studio caved into the demands of the hackers and that their reaction could open up new threats of the kind against others in the future. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. South Korea's nuclear power plant operator says its systems and related computer networks that control nuclear reactors are working fine. This follows reports from last night that crucial pieces of confidential information about employees and reactors were stolen in a hack attack and leaked online this week. The stolen data was reportedly released Monday on a blog run by a group of hackers called Who MI. That blog is now shut down. The plant operator has asked the prosecution to open an investigation into the alleged hacking attack. The government report is currently underway. A probe is underway, but officials say no trace of hacking has been found just yet. Korea's finance minister has pledged to push forward with structural reforms next year as it seeks to achieve a strong and a sustainable growth. And those structural changes will take place in key areas like labor and education. Our Hwang Jie has the details. Structural reform, that's what economic policymakers will focus on next year. Finance Minister Choi kyung hwan said in an economy-related minister's meeting on Friday that the government will push through structural changes in the labor, education, financial and public sectors in 2015 to revive the country's growth potential. The government will raise the efficiency of the public sector and create new dynamics in the financial industry so there can be a virtuous circle between the financial sector and the real economy. Che added that labor sector reform will center around measures to create high-quality jobs and to increase corporate competitiveness, while educational reform will focus on nurturing a workforce that caters to industrial needs. He also emphasized that pushing through structural reforms is a must for the Korean economy, although it's not an easy task. We should overcome our fears toward changes and make a big leap using creative ideas and alternatives. To support the reform efforts, Che said the government will continue to work on revitalizing domestic consumption and investment while closely monitoring risks stemming from the country's snowballing household debt problem. The finance minister's remarks come just days before the government unveils its economy management plan for next year. The plan will lay out the big picture of economic policy direction and new growth forecasts for 2014 and 2015. Hwang Jie, Arirang News. 
President Pakane says women will play a vital role in helping the president realize her vision of a creative economy. The president called on female corporate leaders at a luncheon today to put their heads together to come up with more innovative ideas. She then stressed the need to help women remain economically active even after having children. She also promised government support by way of flexible work hours and financial aid for startups led, led by female. CEOs. The Japanese yen is undervalued by 19 percent, the most undervalued it's been since the year 2000, according to a report by KB Investment and Securities. That's a steep rise from the 3 percent recorded last year. It's also quite a different picture from the third quarter of 2012, when the yen was overvalued by more than 8 percent. That was right before Prime Minister Shinzo Abe announced quantitative easing measures. And KB says, it expects the trend to continue into next year based on expectations that the Abe administration will expand its measures after a sweeping victory in a snap election earlier this month. From nut rage to nut craze, the scandal surrounding the former vice president of Korean Air has been a major headache for this uh, company, but it's given Koreans a taste of, of the macadamia nut, the snack that triggered this whole controversy in the first place. Our Shin Zemin has this report. Macadamia nuts, which were thrust into the spotlight as a result of recent nut rage incident here in Korea, have been a range of its own lately. They are flying off the shelves and selling out online. The incident that battered the career and reputation of former Korean Air executive Cho Hyuna has been a boon for the macadamia nut industry and the country. Major online shopping mall G Market saw sales surge by 20 times last week compared to the week before. Large offline chains like Costco and Lotte Mart have also seen a considerable jump in demand. Suppliers couldn't be happier. More than 80 percent of Korea's imports come from the birthplace of the macadamia nut, Australia. The Australian Macadamia Society said in a press release that it would renew its focus on the Korean market. Hawaii's $38 million macadamia nut industry is also feeling the effects. This week alone, we have uh, received requests for pricing and information on our product line from four or five different uh, groups from Korea. And while demand is rising, some question its origin. It's absurd. And it's unfortunate that this has become the focus of the nation, when we have other real problems hurting the nation. And as for the best way to enjoy the nuts... Yes, I, uh, macadamia nuts, whether they're served in a bag or on a silver platter, uh, it's the same great tasting, very classy nut, no matter how, how you um, have them served. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Instant noodles are popular the world over, but nowhere near as popular as they are in Korea, apparently. A new report shows that Koreans are gobbling up this addictive snack in massive portions. Kim min tells us more. Instant noodles, known in Korea as damyeon, are a popular snack food. It's a quick and simple way for busy workers and students to snag a meal. And maybe that's why Korea is at the top of the list when it comes to consumption of ramyeon. According to the World Instant Noodles Association, the average Korean ate about 74 packets of ramyeon last year, or roughly one serving every five days. Vietnam came in second at 60 packets, followed by Indonesia at 57. The domestic ramyeon market has grown 40 percent over the last five years to about $2 billion. Koreans had already spent over $1.3 billion on ramyeon as of September this year. As for the most favored type of ramyeon, Shin ramyeon, known for its spicy taste, ranked first. It was trailed by Japagetti, Anseong Tangmyeon, Noguri, and Samyang ramyeon. However, when looking at it in total numbers, China, which boasts the world's largest population, consumed the most ramyeon at 46.2 billion packets, followed by Indonesia and Japan. Korea came in seventh at 3.6 billion. 
Meanwhile, Korea produced a total of 590,000 tons of ramen last year. 60% of that total went into packets and around 30% into cups. Ramen exports are also on the rise, jumping to $210 million last year, up 60% from just five years ago. Kim min -ji, Arirang News. The average life expectancy across the world continues to rise. According to a recent report, people are living around six years longer than they were in 1990. If this trend continues, baby boys born in 2030 will live to the age of 78 and girls to the age of 85. The Lancet Medical Journal attributes the rise in dramatic improvements to health care. Those living in wealthy countries have benefited from a drop in heart diseases while those in underdeveloped countries are dying less from illnesses like pneumonia, diarrhea and malaria. The lifespan of the average South Korean over the past uh, two plus decades has gone up by nine years to 81. The Republican Party in the U.S. has lashed out at President Barack Obama's decision to normalize relations with Cuba after more than 50 years of hostilities. With more, we turn to Polly at the News Center. Paul, the backlash comes just a day after Obama made the historic announcement. What are the Republicans saying? Well, many in the Republican leadership are warning that this will have a chilling effect on democracy and freedom in the region. The GOP began its campaign on Thursday to block several measures from easing travel restrictions to lifting the decades-old trade embargo. Families of the brothers to the rescue to save Obama's deal uh, appeases the Castro regime at the expense of the rights and and freedoms of uh, of Cubans. O Obama sacrificed the dreams of millions of people on the island while making no progress toward a democratic Cuba. The Cuban people are no more free today than they were before Obama's terrible deal. Earlier, the White House indicated that a U.S. visit by Cuban President Raul Castro was a possibility. Mm. And uh, shifting to Australia, the country is reeling from yet another horrific attack this week. Authorities are investigating at this point a mass stabbing attack that's left eight children dead. Tell us what happened. Well, it's a shocking incident to say the least. An ambulance was called to a house in the northern city of Cairns on this Friday. Emergency workers attended to a 34-year-old woman with severe knife wounds. They also found several victims ranging from around 18 months to 15 years of age. The woman in hospital is the mother of uh, most of the children that have been found deceased. Uh, there's still some, no identification has been carried out yet uh, formally uh, to, to uh, formally identify who the children are, so we need to be a little careful about that. Um, but at this stage, we believe she's the mother of seven of the children. Officials have not yet identified any suspects, but reassured the public that there is no current threat to the community. Mm. And uh, turning to Japan now, Paul, the country's uh, top science institute has halted all research related to a controversial stem cell project. This after its researchers were accused of falsifying results. Can you give us some insight into this research as well as its importance? Well, the so-called STAP research was supposed to usher in a new era of medicine, one that could easily create stem cells in order to treat a wide range of diseases. On Friday, however, the investigation team at the Riken Center said it would shut down the research as it could not defend accusations that the original results were fabricated. We were not able to recreate the staff phenomenon. We were expected to continue the verification process until March of next year. However, in light of these results, we have decided to terminate the experiments. The main researcher, Haruko Obokata, was not present at Friday's news conference, but announced in a statement that she would be stepping down. And finally, some of uh, Hollywood's biggest blockbuster films are set to go head-to-head -head this weekend. And it looks like The Hobbit is poised for a win at the box office. 
That's right. The last chapter in the Hobbit trilogy is expected to dominate ticket sales in North America during its opening run. This, despite receiving mixed reviews from critics, the Battle of the Five Armies opened on Wednesday to the tune of nearly 25 million U.S. dollars and is expected to double that over the next three days. Also opening this weekend is the Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb, with stars Ben Stiller and also the late actor Robin Williams. Charity. All right, Paul. Uh, let's uh, leave it there for now. Thank you so much for those stories, and we'll see you again in just about two hours. Hope your week is wrapping up nicely. I'm Kim Bo Kyung with the weather updates. At the moment, we are under cloudy skies nationwide, with showers falling in some regions along the southern coast, and it looks like this will spread to most places later tonight. Along with the showers, some heavy snowfall is in store for the inland regions. Over 15 centimeters could fall in Gangwon-do province, while about two to seven is expected for other places, including Seoul. The snow and showers will gradually clear. Up by tomorrow morning, and numbers will remain in the seasonal average range. However, once conditions clear up, cold air will move in from the north, leading to a big drop in numbers on Sunday. On to Saturday's readings. Seoul makes it to 1, Gwangju hits 5, Busan reaches 10. On to other places. Jeju makes it to 8, Tokyo hits 10, Mount Kumgang remains colder. Hope you have a lovely Friday evening. I'll see you soon. Thank you very much, Bo Gyeong, and that wraps up this edition of Arirang News. Thanks for watching.